All right, good evening. Welcome to the November 1st Village Board Legislative Session. This meeting is now called to order. We'll begin with the pledge. Trustee Bazemore? Present. Trustee Codman? Present. Trusty Cazada? Present. Trusty Levin? Present. And Mayor Garrity? Present. Do we have any mayors and trustees announcements? We do. Um, and actually, there, are, there will be a lot of positive and exciting things to talk about that have been going on in our community in just the last week. Um, but we're going to open up with um, a disturbing uh, incident that we have to, uh, we'd like to acknowledge in this forum. Um, and I know when uh, Chief Sylvester makes his remarks later, he can um, explain more from the law enforcement aspect um, what happened. But this weekend, there was a, there was a hate crime that was committed uh, in our community. Um, someone painted a swastika on one of our streets. It was removed very quickly, and the police are investigating it. Um, this is a community that values inclusion, that values every culture, and more than that, when we see someone violating our values, when we see someone perpetrating hate that is designed to divide us, uh, we don't stand by idly. We take it very seriously. And um, I'd like to ask if any of my colleagues would like to comment further. You know, I just, um, you know, for me, I spoke to the mayor and some of my colleagues when I heard about this. Look, I'm um, a child who's born to survivors of the Holocaust. It's really, really disturbing when you see some of this coming up, not only here, but in other parts of Westchester around the country. Um, you know, my father's nine years old, and um, you know, it's probably um, something that I grew up with. And the most frequent questions you ask when you're a child is, you know, why did anybody stop anything? Didn't you see it coming? And you know, it starts with small stuff. Um, I'm glad that in this country it's considered a hate crime, regardless of your age, and I'm sure the chief will talk about it. But um, we have a lot of uh, members of the Jewish community, um, been around for over 100 years in this community, and I hope that we catch the person, and I hope that this is taken as a moment for people to learn that these kind of acts are really offensive um, to the community at large. So I'm glad everything was taken care of really very quickly. I appreciate all the work that went into it. Okay. Um, well, I know we'll hear from the chief with some more background on that in a moment, but uh, I understand that Deputy Mayor Codman has a statement to read about Northern Main Street. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I do want to make a statement about uh, 200 Main Street. Um, let me begin by saying that the mayor had recused herself uh, from this transaction. She was not a party to the negotiated agreements, nor was she part of the termination of the contract or any decision related to that. The village has been more than willing to work with viable, well-funded developers of all sizes across various projects over the past decade. The pace of development has, in fact, been increasing even more rapidly in the past few years, as evidenced by more traffic, more residential units, increased commercial space, and more small businesses opening their doors every day. The project on 200 Main Street has been at the heart of the board's plan to improve and invest in our downtown on behalf of our community. Elected officials and village staff have spent numerous hours in meetings with the Corinthian Group, negotiating revisions to the contract of sale, adjusting timelines, and in general making every effort to accommodate Corinthian and as well protect the village interests. After multiple efforts over many months to accommodate this developer, the decision was made to terminate the contract with Corinthian as provided in the revised agreement. Corinthian immediately pursued legal action against the village and just as quickly withdrew its complaint when it was pointed out that a required preliminary step did not occur. Last week, Corinthian Group served a notice of claim against the village. That claim will be defended by the village. Let us be very clear. This village management, in conjunction with the Board of Trustees, is eager to work properly funded developers who meet their obligations. Now, I have to say that, you know, I'm, I'm obviously very disappointed in this result, and uh, this was not anything that any of us wanted. Um, the four trustees 
aside the mayor, um, made, we made this decision unanimously, and uh, we need now to go forward. We have a clean slate, we're going to reconvene, and we are going to do something with this building, and I look forward to the future. Thank you. I don't know. Does anybody have a comment? Besides that? No. Nope. Before anything, um, the statement that was read by Deputy uh, Mayor Cotman is actually the rest of the trustees. Uh, we went over something that um, part of uh, discussions, so I think we all agree to that and definitely are open developers. We want to work, we want to develop our village, want to make this work. That was not the case. Um, are where we are at this point. Stay tuned and see what happens with that with property. It's a value property, something that I think everybody is wants to see to to happen and that is in the main of our the beginning of our main of our heart of Atlanta. Hopefully something soon will happen. On it further? No. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, well, just in case people are focusing on this project for the first time now, I will explain. Um, the reason I recused myself is uh, the Corinthian Group is the landlord for my husband's business on Spring Street, actually right across the street from where we are right now. So it would have been inappropriate for me to uh, to be part of the negotiation. Um, so I didn't have any inside knowledge, so uh, I was as you know disappointed and surprised as anyone, and I know how hard my colleagues on the board work to uh, everybody in the village to have great things happen for Austin, and I, I look forward to us having something great happening in that beautiful marquee building. Okay, let's lighten up the mood a little bit here. Uh, yesterday <laughs> uh, was Halloween, and uh, I think this is the second time we were outside for the trunk or treat, and um, uh, Chief, when, when you give your announcements, I hope you'll give us a little more insight into the great success that you had on a beautiful night down in uh, the heart of our downtown with uh, lots of lots of kids enjoying uh, spending the evening with our first responders. Thanks so much for making that happen and for partnering with um, the other uh, first responders and with the Recreation Department for that. Um, and I will call to folks' attention that this Saturday at the um, community center from 11 until 3 p.m. is uh, the Repair Cafe, which is organized by Green Austin. They hold it every quarter now and uh, the village is pleased to be able to um, co-sponsor that event. Um, basically we provide them with a space and if you have something broken um, but you wish it still functioned, bring it down to the community center between 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock. The last time they held it I brought the wise man for my nativity scene and it is now a mostly intact wise man. He's glued back together. And uh, my son's backpack that uh, one of the straps had ripped, so now he can use that backpack again because I don't sew and I didn't have the right glue. And it was very nice to have somebody um, focus my attention on fixing a few things. Um, and then before I turn it over, I know there's uh, some other things that my colleagues want to call folks' attention to, but I would like to take a moment to um, just tell folks about the wonderful event that happened in the middle of the day today, and some of us were there. Um, everybody at this table was there, Debbie and, and Stuart and Marianne, um, as well as a, a num as well as the town supervisor and a number of other folks from uh, village government. We were at the Indian Brook Reservoir celebrating the completion of the dam rehabilitation project. Uh, you've been hearing us speak about it for years. Um, I did have a chance to speak with the um, consulting engineers who were with that project. In fact, um, according to the um, uh, Carolyn Lowe, who's the vice president of Arcadis, who started the designs, she said it was almost 10 years ago that they started doing the testing to determine um, the, the level of, you know, of, of where there might be some concerns, and eventually it became an order that we had to respond to it. But what we did, um, and I'm so delighted by um, all of the benefits of this rehabilitation project, because um, this earthen dam was constructed, uh, construction was completed in 1889. We have the set stone in the gatehouse. It's still there. It tells us when it was constructed. And it has been serving this community ever since then. Um, it, what it did is the, uh, the Indian Brook was, the flow was stopped there from going further into the Croton Reservoir. And it has, uh, it became our primary source for drinking water here in Austin. And with the upgrade, we now um, are going to be more storm resilient which is very important as we see storms coming more frequently and bigger storms. In fact, the spillway has a 10 times greater capacity than um, its predecessor, um, which will protect us from overtopping or any potential failure for the earthen dam. Um, then we also, the intake, which is where they 
take the water from the reservoir and bring it to the filter plant, it now will be able to um, draw a higher quality of water at different levels of the, of the reservoir. So as we get higher quality of raw water into the plant, we can use less chemicals in the processing and we create less sludge. That's better for the environment and that's better for our pocketbooks. And it also means that we can purchase less water from New York City, which also saves money for the community. So it's a really, really wonderful investment in our infrastructure. And when um, the intake structure was designed, um, it obviously works with the current filtration plant, but it will also work with the filtration plant um, that is that is under design right now to, uh, to go in that location adjacent to the reservoir. So it was a really beautiful event. Thank you to everybody who put it together. <laughs> and um, and it was really, really special to be there. And thank you to, especially to our water superintendent, Andrew Teese, and to our um, village engineer, Paul Fraioli, for overseeing this project over the, the years that it took. And um, they both uh, expressed their gratitude to this board and past boards who have been so supportive of uh, investing in this very important infrastructure. Certainly having safe, reliable drinking water is uh, an essential um, component to village government, and we are especially fortunate in Austin to have our own source water. Very few communities in this area do. So thank you to everyone who made that possible. All right, I've spoken enough. Who else has uh, announcements? Please, Deputy Mayor. Uh, it's November, and um, there's a second Saturday in November, and on that second Saturday, there's jazz at the Elks Lodge. And um, we're excited to uh, bring back uh, our own uh, Jazz locals, uh, Stone Avenue crew uh, plays home to Cav, uh, and uh, they'll be playing on the 11th of November uh, at the Oaks Lodge at 7:30, and uh, it's part of the Austin Second Saturday Jazz Series. Um, excited to have um, all local folks uh, come and play, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, the uh, the lodge will provide uh, refreshments and uh, and also some pub food, and uh, all money at the door goes to the performers. So that's uh, Austining Second Saturday Jazz, November 11th, 7.30, Austining Elks Lodge. Thank you. Um, just wanted to remind folks, um, I was asked to announce that first weekend in December, Camp Woods has their annual, I think it's called a fair, but it's mostly it's wonderful stores. I did not bring the scarf I got there, but wearing it happily. Um, most of the time, so please support um, the effort and go out and get some really wonderful gifts for the holidays. All right, then I'm just gonna... There's one very important reminder that somehow slipped my mind, but perhaps um, Madam Clerk would have commented if we had forgotten. Next Tuesday is November 7th, it's election day. Um, so uh, if you have any questions about your polling place, reach out to the Westchester Board of Elections and they can confirm that for you either online, do a little search for Westchester Board of Elections and you can find that out. Um, and I would imagine the clerk's office knows all if you would like to. I was gonna say, I wouldn't call the Westchester County Clerk's <laughs> Office or the County Board of Elections because they are very busy right now. <laughs> um, but we have a list of your polling places. All you have to do is give us your address and we can tell you what polling place you're going to go to so thank you please uh leave them alone over there <laughs> <laughs> well if you go online there's a lot of information but yes to, to talk to a real person your, your local um friendly clerk's office is the way to go um and uh, i'll just call to folks attention if you if you have not been paying attention there are some some pretty tight races at the county level so you should look into that um for both county executive and for <coughs> Uh, county legislator that represents us here in District 9 and there are three propositions or three proposals from New York State um, that are pretty interesting so um, that's worth worth doing some research and uh, the League of Women Voters is always a good resource for finding some um, nonpartisan information about anything that's going to be on the ballot. ballot. With that, Madam Clerk. We'll move on to administrative reports and we'll begin with Village Manager Deborah Pinto. Thank you very much. Um, I think that all I have to report is the budget is done. I'm very excited about it. Um, I do want to thank Tom Warren, our treasurer, and uh, our deputy treasurer as well, because the work that the two of them put in to putting this budget together is monumental. And the staff worked very, very hard to um, take a very deep dive look into where they're spending their money and what what outcomes they're hoping to have this year. So I think that when we have our budget meetings with all of you, you'll be very happy to hear about the initiatives that they're undertaking and how they plan to spend the money for their own budgets. Uh, we have kept the budget under the tax cap, our, uh, the, what we're presenting to you. And um, I think we're very excited about that. 
and um, we have added many of the initiatives uh, that the board has requested. So we're excited about being able to talk about that. Um, it's been all encompassing and uh, being my first budget, it was eye opening in many respects. Um, but I think everyone was so great in helping me understand the statistics and how much and what they do and and, um, and the, the depth and the breadth of what they do here for our residents. And um, I'm actually very proud of the departments. I think we have exceptional employees and I think they're doing a great job. So I look forward to having the independent budget meetings with all of you. Um, and we will be posting the budget uh, meetings online so that others that want to partake or, or look at it, you know, be a part of it, they can because they're all public meetings. So um, most of them are in the evening, but one full day. So we're looking forward to that. But um, if, I don't know if you want me to pass them out now or if you want me to pass out the budgets. Well, we're not, we're, you want to pass, oh, Tom's ready to pass them out now. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, okay. You need help? I can do that. <laughs> no, uh, I think that would make. No, I think he's here. That's... Are you? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Do that. Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pour myself a pot of coffee and start reading. I'm going with something stronger. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a bad thing for me. Um, okay, we are going to uh, kind of jump over a little bit here. We're going to go to continuing business of the board, downtown development fund discussion. Yes, so um, in the interest of um, uh, inviting one of the members of the Downtown Development Fund Council if he would like to comment on this. We're going to move continuing business up earlier in the meeting. And Mr. Zelsman, I just want to make sure that you're aware that we're talking about you right now. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, because we do have a pretty lengthy agenda and, and you, certainly well, you're welcome you to stay. for the whole thing and go You still can, end. even if we talk about this first, you can. Um, so uh, I'll turn it over to um, uh, Trustee Levin to introduce and tell us uh, what we're going to be discussing tonight. So the down, Downtown Development uh, Found Council um, does some really great projects. If you drive down, oh, here's Andy as well. If you drive down the streets, you see the lit um, trees and the wells. And I'm hoping that all of you rush to the website and go and uh, purchase uh, one of the tree wells, or at least lease them for two years. It helps support the program. It's on the website. Those were a couple of projects that were presented um, last year, now we're up to what we've done. Andy, is it the third year in the row with this? Or second? Third year, uh, many of our commuters um, get tags um, sent to them uh, for parking down in the parking lot. So the council thought it would be really a good thing to promote local business, especially new local business with a discount card. So you guys are on. One of you or both of you. He moved you up earlier in the meeting, so you got yeah. here right on, the, right on the nose. Good job. There you go. It's like out of a movie. Um, thank you again for uh, uh, letting us continue to do this. Um, just, uh, just to expand on what uh, Rika said, it's year three of the card. Um, we would like to expand. Uh, last year we had 11 businesses on the card. Um, this year we'd like to expand to the back of the card as there's room, so we can add an extra six businesses, bringing it to a total of 17. Um, I've already gotten commitments from 11 um, businesses so far, uh, nine returning, two new ones, which is always great. Um, Metro Pups and uh, Estacion de Pais uh, down by the train station, both of them. So um, that's the latest. Um, it should be a quick turnaround on this project since a lot of um, there are a lot of returning businesses. The card formats in order. So that always helps. Um, like I said, we're just trying to, you know, nail down those last couple of businesses and um, hoping to have everything ready to roll by um, 
you know, by Thanksgiving or sooner if possible. Um, so, which is, which will be nice ahead of the game for, 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 for those who have to stuff the envelopes with these. So, um, the total cost of the project, um, for layout and for running another print batch of about 2000, which is what we did last year, um, which would cover about the 700 roughly, uh, parking permits, uh, that get sent out and then another 1300 that are, you know, just, distributed <clears throat> around uh, town in different ways. Uh, the total would be a little bit under $500 for that, uh, that we you know, would like to draw from the, uh, the, the downtown fund council. So that's pretty much the summary and questions. I'm happy to answer. Do we have and, to vote and, on it or is that what we're doing? <laughs> yeah, it's a request for funds that we have to draw, right, Tom, from the funds. So do we have to, what do we, have we, to don't, do? we don't tonight. And okay, then it'll so just be drawn from. There's, there's no ATM in here. <laughs> yes, the ATMs are right here, right by the village manager. Yes. We are the code. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Well, thank you, thank you thank so you. much, thank you so much. It was, I think this was your idea three years ago, and you made it happen, and we really appreciate that. And it's a wonderful way to reach out to our local businesses and to make people aware of it and support them. So thanks so much for making it happen. Appreciate it's good that you're. And thank you. The chamber has been helpful this year in, in uh, you know, right. helping to get some of the newer businesses, uh, you know, quickly and easily on board. So good, you're keeping it going. Thank you. We're trying. Thanks. Thanks a lot. All right, back to our regularly scheduled program, Madam Clerk. We will now go back to Corporation Council Stuart Kahan. Thank you, Mary Ann. Good evening, members of the board. Before I get into the agenda items, uh, you may recall a couple of months ago the board passed a resolution regarding anchorages along the Hudson River. Uh, I'm pleased to report that the governor has signed legislation which will allow the state to establish guidelines for tanker avoidance zones uh, up and down the Hudson. The bill had been sponsored by State Senator Sue Serino and Assemblywoman Dee Dee Barrett, uh, both of uh, uh, one of from Dutchess County, both from Dutchess County, excuse me. And it amends the state navigation law to allow New York to establish guidelines that would prevent oil tankers from anchoring in certain areas of the river, as well as set up minimum conditions under which petroleum-bearing vessel, vessels are allowed to navigate uh, on the Hudson. And that was signed last week. So I just, since we had a resolution on that, I thought everyone might want to know that if that has occurred. Thank you for that. Uh, on tonight's uh, agenda, uh, specifically with regard uh, to uh, Corporation Council, uh, there are two resolutions. Uh, the first is, uh, well, there are a few, few different ones. We're calling for public hearings with regard to local laws eight and local laws nine, eight being on noise ordinance amendment, and nine uh, relating to uh, boards and commissions and, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and term limits with regard to those boards and commissions. And those were discussed at length at our various work sessions. Uh, there are two other resolutions I just wanted to bring to the board's attention uh, tonight. One is resolution M and the other is resolution N. Uh, both of these will permit uh, the Corporation Council uh, to uh, proceed with litigation. Uh, involving two matters. The first involves uh, property that the village owns at 1 Liberty Street. Uh, this is uh, with regard to a, uh, a, a trespass on that particular property uh, from the property at 3 Liberty Street. Uh, the area was uh, clear cut and trees were removed. Uh, and, uh, uh, the, uh, and, and this uh, pursuant to the charter as it's noted in this resolution, uh, it's the duty of the Corporation Council to prosecute and defend all suits. Uh, and uh, authorization is sought tonight to proceed with such litigation. Uh, resolution N relates to another property that is at 21 Edward Street, uh, and that is property which is directly across the street from Park School. Uh, this is a property which the Corporation Council is seeking permission to proceed with litigation to have that property declared as abandoned uh, pursuant to, uh, to New York's uh, Real Property Action and Proceedings Law, Article 19A. Uh, this is a property which uh, a number of years ago had a, uh, a severe fire, uh, effectively uh, gutting the entire house, uh, but leaving it open to the elements. Uh, the house shares a, a common wall with 23 uh, Edward Street. Uh, the owners of 21 Edward Street have effectively abandoned the property. Uh, they attempted a sale. That sale did not go through. Uh, there is no insurance on the property, so no repairs have been made. In fact, only the village is the only entity that has done anything to uh, attempt to secure that property. Uh, but uh, this uh, particular resolution would authorize the Corporation Council to proceed with the process of having that property declared as abandoned 
uh, and that property would then be turned over to the village uh, in accord with uh, New York's real property action and proceedings law. So I did want to uh, bring those two to, to the attention of both the public and the board uh, as they will be on uh, tonight's agenda. Thank you very much. And um, the board has had a number of conversations in either advice of counsel or an executive session related to these topics. Um, but we've, I don't believe we've had any public discussion. Uh, but when the resolutions come up for discussion uh, before any vote is taken, any board members who would like to comment or make quest ask questions, uh, we'll have it up. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to Police Chief Kevin Sylvester. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to start by addressing the uh, swastika incident that we discussed earlier in the meeting. A um, couple of takeaways from this investigation that, that at least we'd like to the public to have right now. Uh, first, this doesn't appear to be targeted at any individual. Um, based on the circumstances surrounding uh, what we observed and what we found, it appears to be something that was um, based on opportunity, um, largely from uh, some materials that were left out, presumably for garbage. Uh, and not that that should give anybody comfort, but we're um, at least optimistic looking at the fact that this doesn't appear to target the resident who lived at that address or anybody else in that particular area. Notwithstanding, um, I'm proud to be part of a police department that feels that when you target anyone in particular or any group or even just in general, that uh, it won't be tolerated, that it's not something our police department will stand for, and that when you threaten one part of our community, you've threatened all of it. So uh, we're going to be putting a great deal of resources into this. We've, um, we've had great cooperation from the neighbors in that area, so we're happy for that. And um, we're hoping to progress this very quickly. Uh, on a better note, um, I think that uh, the the best sign of what our community really is, is how things turned out a few days later when we get to Halloween. Uh, I know that the, we had a great deal of, of assistance and first I want to acknowledge all those people because oftentimes when we do our social media stuff, we progress quickly and forget to thank all those that, that really make these things happen. But the Austin Recreation, the Austin Fire Department, OVAC, the Elks Lodge, uh, the Rotary and some local businesses, um, Austin Towing, who we don't have a direct relationship but comes out every year to help with Halloween, Health Smart Pharmacy that puts a whole lot into this, the Fun Zone, and um, I don't have my whole list with me, but these are the ones I'm remembering off the top of my head, uh, that really made Halloween a, a special event for a lot of kids here. The uh, Rotary reported to us today that they went through more than a thousand hot dogs last night. Uh, <laughs> we went back to the grocery store twice to re-up on candy, so we think that we gave away somewhere in the range of 75 pounds of candy last night. And uh, that covers us and a few of the volunteers that came, but also some of those local businesses that brought their own candy. And that doesn't cover what the cops on the desk went out and bought with their own money yesterday, because uh, as this becomes a bigger and bigger event, those traveling from the downtown neighborhoods up here, the main street to hang out with us, um, of course, you've got to stop at our house too. So, um, you know, Halloween's a lot of fun for us. I know that there were a few people that were commenting on having, uh, we do troll all of the internet forums, so I know that there were a few people that were upset that maybe Halloween wasn't as robust in their neighborhood. Um, I, I lay this down as a challenge, upgrade your party and um, take it back. But in the meantime, <laughs> Uh, we're having fun. Uh, I have no idea how many people we had because I wasn't able to stay for the whole thing, but the photos I got throughout the night after I left, Main Street was packed from end to end. We've already gotten people reaching out to us uh, to talk about next year, and I think that's really telling about what Austin is. Uh, you can come here and you can try to do things that will intimidate people, but we're going to come back and we're going to come out as a community and we're going to show everybody how we can get along together. So I'm really grateful for that. Uh, in the month of November, one other fun thing we've got going on is it is no shave November. So if you see police officers walking around um, looking a little scraggly, they've been permitted to forego the general order, um, instructing them to be clean shaven every day. Uh, they're, the Austin PBA is doing a fundraiser. Each of the officers that participates is donating money and raising funds to support uh, men's health issues. And uh, in exchange, they are being permitted to go 30 days without shaving. They can grow beards. So uh, no one's getting in trouble for this one. They've, they've got my blessing, and we think it's a fun way to, um, to promote some, some good issues. Uh, one last thing about that, we are in competition with the Peekskill Police Department. Uh, Chief Johansson and I have a, a small wager going. Uh, whichever department can produce the one officer with the single longest beard will win. The loser is on the hook for lunch, and we will spend the day wearing the high school colors of the opposing jurisdiction. So I look Wait. forward to seeing Chief Johansson in his custom-made Austin High School football jersey <laughs> with his name on the back um, on December 1st. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. We'll move on. Uh, is there any organizational announcement? 
not seeing any. Uh, we have village board resolutions. Is there anyone here who would like to speak on any of the resolutions? Kindly provide your name and your residential address. My name is Adam Waterbury. I live at uh, 23 Edward Street. Um, the house that's connected to um, ask for resolution N, 21 Edward Street. And I do have to make a correction as to something that uh, uh, Stewart said. I spent $18,000 to repair a section of uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Gooden's home in January of my own money. I currently have an open lawsuit against Mr. Gooden for that um, for those funds, which I started in January. That um, was done because he had done nothing to fix the home um, since the fire. So basically, when my when my contractor went in, things that, that I know that are actually in the home that were connected right to my home, uh, black mold, mildew, carpenter bees. Um, I trapped myself, nine raccoons, uh, six of them in the last month um, that have been basically coming towards my property. Um, I've had raccoons that have been standing on the, on the top of the ha top of my neighbor's home, growling at my mother-in-law and my dog, and I also have a three-year-old child. So this this in itself, along with a laundry list of other problems. Um, has really raised a lot of real personal emotional issues dealing with this. Um, I can't sell my home at all because my home is, um, as per the last uh, tax evaluation, was uh, valued at two hundred forty-eight thousand dollars. So it would be a short sale. So I can't even get rid of my. I can't even get out of my house. I found uh, used uh, condom wrappers in the backyard of his home. Magnum condom wrappers. I've seen homeless people in the backyard. Um, and Mr. Gooden has done nothing other than just he had a dumpster there one day to empty out some things. So with all that being said, I really, really, really need some support to get this home declared abandoned because it is abandoned for all intents and purposes because Mr. Gooden has done nothing other than just argue that um, he's that he is handicapped and he can't do anything and that we should feel sorry for him. Well, what about my my situation. I have a three year old child who has asthma, who's twelve feet away from black mold. Sorry, you know I don't feel I don't feel bad for him. I have to look out for my family. So when my daughter's coughing at night and with her asthma pump, who's there other than other than uh, myself and my wife? It's it's really unfortunate. And every time I go outside in my yard, I wonder if there's someone there just camping out in his yard, doing God knows what. So with all that being said, I really urge the board for some support in getting this resolution resolved because there's nothing that Mr. Gooden is doing, nothing that I can do further, so I really need your, your support. Stuart, no, did you want to comment I, now? I, I Thank just, you very I, much for your comments. And, 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 I, and, I, and I do apologize. I, I, I was aware of the 18,000 and did not say that. Uh, what <laughs> Mr. Uh, Waterbury is related is in fact the case. Uh, uh, we've had the building department out there on numerous occasions. Uh, when I was out there, I think a couple of days ago, the next door neighbor said that he observed at least 12 or 12 raccoons going in and out of the house. Uh, it's, uh, it's clearly open to the elements, despite the fact that what I was referring to is that the village had at one point put a tarp on the roof uh, of 21, but that with everything has blown off. And, and the last time the building to pe folks were in there, water was cascading clear. It's black mold up all the areas. The only area that's partially cleared is the area that, in fact, Mr. Waterbury has spent $18,000 of his own money to, in fact, do some work in, which is sort of the area where the two homes uh, are, are joined. But uh, this abandonment, this, this uh, action towards abandonment and other actions that the village uh, may be able to take will at least move this forward so that the property can be declared abandoned uh, and uh, turned back to the village uh, because it is clear, and uh, uh, Mr. Waterbury is completely correct in this, that the uh, property owner at 21 Edward Street has simply done nothing with that property and has uh, uh, the insurance coverage lapsed, I believe, days before the fire occurred. Uh, and so there is no insurance coverage on that property, so there is absolutely nothing that's being done to it. Uh, it is in a severely deteriorated condition, and as I pointed out again, and as Mr. Waterbury knows, directly across the street from Park School. So that's why that resolution is on tonight. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm uh, Jeremy Wood of 
Three Liberty Street. Uh, Stuart has a mailing address for me other than Three Liberty Street. Um, my wife and I own this property. We've owned it for about five years. We just got the, a temporary certificate of occupancy over the summer. Uh, Joe with the building department helped us get that so my wife could recover there from her cancer surgery. Um, I gather you've seen the lot. I just wanted to say that uh, before I did anything on the lot, uh, it was overgrown and untended. There were huge chunks of concrete laying on the ground. You couldn't tell sort of where the ground began and where the concrete was. There were pallets, electrical cables, and all sorts of trash thrown around. There were vines growing all over the trees, mostly bending them over. There was this really annoying invasive Japanese knotweed growing there, and the stone wall was crumbling. So uh, it was, as I say, not in the best condition and not being tended at all in the time that I've owned the property next door. Uh, we removed the concrete, the trash, and the vines, and yes, some trees, none that were of large diameter. We left the lovely willow tree which I'm not sure is on village land, uh, and removed the vines that were uh, clogging it. Uh, I planted four trees, a crepe myrtle, a magnolia, a red maple, and a red bud tree, which I think will be lovely. And I was planning to seed the area that we had cleared uh, as a meadow because that would look nice, and I hear that's good for wildlife and the world needs more meadows. Uh, I didn't think that I was damaging the lot. I saw that I was improving the lot, or that's the way I saw it. I had previously offered to purchase the lot, and I'd love to be able to purchase the lot now. Uh, in fact, uh, after Stewart contacted me, uh, my lawyer talked with Stewart, uh, and I don't know, the conversation touched on many things, including, I gather, the possibility of my buying it, which I would welcome. Uh, and as to suing me, it seems like a lot of wasted time and energy. Uh, you can always sue me later. I'd hope that we could, you know, work out something if, you know, there's some need for that. Uh, if anyone's interested, I have pictures of the concrete and, uh, vines ending the trees. Thank you for your comments. Um, in, in both of these, uh, resolutions, uh, as I pointed out, um, the board, uh, I, I imagine a number of us may want to comment uh, at the appropriate time after uh, the clerk has read into the uh, record the, the resolution and before we vote on it because we have had conversations with uh, council um, uh, on both of these uh, property related um, resolutions and, and I know that there's there's some further background and comments and questions that I'm sure we'd like to bring up at that time but I'll, I'll hold off on making any further comment now. Stuart, if there's anything you feel that you need to interject at this point, please go ahead. The only thing, Mayor, I just wanted to add is uh, uh, we did, uh, the village did have an arborist go to the site. It is estimated between 23 and 28 trees averaging approximately five inch breast diameter were removed uh, in addition to uh, undergrowth vines uh, and, uh, and, uh, and other areas around there but I did just want, want want to put that in otherwise I'll hold off until it actually is read thank you for that update is there anyone else who'd like to address the board on any of these resolutions not seeing any well move on to the resolution <laughs> resolve that the board of trustees of the village of Austin hereby approves the minutes of the October 18th 2017 regular meeting as presented do I have a motion so moved second. second on the board madam clerk all those in favor Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolved the Board of Trustees of the Village of Austin hereby approves the minutes of the October 25th, 2017 special meeting as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. On the board? Madam Clerk. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolved the Board of Trustees of the Village of Austin hereby approves the voucher detail report dated November 1st. 2017 in the amount of six hundred twenty six thousand five hundred thirty one dollars and fourteen cents. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, on the board, Adam Clerk. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Resolved that the village clerk is authorized to advertise for bids for contract number DPW 17-05, rehabilitation of the Broadway Bridge, uh, bin 2225180, to be returnable to the office of the village clerk. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. On the board? Um, I'll just come. I believe it was the, three weeks ago. Was it on the 11th when we had the discussion about the um, the Broadway Bridge? Which, um, so I just want to. Sorry. Check, oh, I'm checking, <laughs> checking our calendar. You know, so I was in a recent work session, but it wasn't last week because last week we talked about something else. So I think it was the 11th of October um, when we discussed the Broadway Bridge um, rehabilitation. If not, then it was um, in September. But it, it is a really exciting project. It's the lower of the, the, dub, the two that make the double arch right in the heart of our downtown. And it's we're going to be able to next year not have that ugly black netting as you walk under the Sing Sing Hill Greenway. Instead, we're going to have a beautifully rehabilitated bridge that's going to look better than ever, being um, restoring all of the old bricks and actually improving the upper level so that we'll take out that ugly chain link fence and it'll be replaced with a steel uh, Mac, uh, black fence uh, up on the, um, the upper level. It'll be uh, complementary to the, um, the bridge above it, the, uh, the Croton Aqueduct. So I'm, I'm really very, very excited about that project. So looking forward to seeing how these bids go. Madam Clerk. All those in favor? Aye. 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 If it's the 11th? Is it? I don't know. Was it the 11th or no, was it the 8th? was a work session. Yeah, it was a work session when we discussed right. it. So I don't have to do anything. No, oh, no, we're not voting. I was no. Just... No. <laughs> oh. okay. That was just a discussion. Yeah. Resolved that the village manager of the village of Boston is authorized to enter into a contract with Empire Consulting, 65 Reading Road, P.O. Box 578, Georgetown, Connecticut, for professional and technical consulting services in connection with the village's employee drug and alcohol testing program for the period January 1st, 2018 to December 31st, 2020. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. On the board? Madam Clerk? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolved that the village manager of the village of Ossie is hereby authorized to sign a contract Subject to review and approval by the Corporation Council with Triad Group, LLC, 185 Jordan Road, Troy, New York, to provide services as third-party administrator for the village's workers' compensation insurance program and case management for Federal Municipal Law Section 207C, claims for the terms beginning on January 1, 2018 and expiring on December 31, 2018. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. On the board? Madam Clerk? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolved that the village clerk is authorized to advertise for bids for contract OFD 17-04, furnish and deliver one new 1500 GPM Humber fire apparatus to be returnable to the office of the village clerk. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. On the board, please. Uh, we had a discussion about this at the work session, and um, I'm pleased that um, uh, we're going to be adding another brand new uh, app fire apparatus uh, to uh, to Steamer Company, and um, I'm uh, excited to vote in favor of this today, and uh, I'll continue to provide the best possible equipment for the safety and uh, protection of our village. And I see that uh, some of the members of the truck committee are here with us this evening, as you were last week. Thank you very much for, for coming out. And I know you've spent many, many hours getting us to this point. Thank you so much for your volunteering every day, and then in particular for, for uh, taking a real hard look at exactly what the needs of your company are. Thanks so much. Good to see you. Um, Jim Drohan, the president, is here as well. Thanks so much. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh. Oh. Aye. Aye. Okay. Resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Austin hereby authorizes the Village Manager to sign a lease agreement with Austin Steamer Company, Inc. of Austin, New York, with its mailing address as P.O. Box 747, Austin, New York, for a three-year term, April 1, 2016 through March 31, 2019, for rental by the Village of a portion of the premises located at the ground floor of 117 Main Street, Austin, New York, which location is currently occupied by fire apparatus and equipment of the Ossing Volunteer Fire Department and the ground floor on Central Avenue, 
now occupied by fire apparatus and equipment of the Assing Steamer Company, such lease agreement being subject to review and approval by Corporation Council. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. On the board? It's a standard contract, so it's ongoing business. Madam Clerk. All those in favor? Aye. 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 What else is in favor? Yes. Whereas pursuant to Village Code Section 126-1, the Board of Trustees may from time to time, but not more than once annually, prescribe by resolution the fees or charges to be paid to the Village of Ossing for any and all licenses and permits to be issued by the Village or any officer or department thereof. And whereas the Board of Trustees has considered the current fee schedule for alarm user, amazement, amusement device, <laughs> refreshment business, and sidewalk cafes, and that such consideration included a review of fees charged to neighboring communities. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the 2018 fee schedule for alarm users, amusement device, refreshment business, and sidewalk cafe is set as follows, that these fees shall be reflected on the 2018 fee schedule. Alarm user registration, $50 residential, $75 commercial. Annual review, $40 residential and $50 commercial. Amusement device, first device, $75. Each additional device, two through six, is $50 each. And each additional device, more than six, is $100 each. Uh, refreshment business, $75. Sidewalk cafe, $75 plus deposit of $15 per linear foot. I have a motion. So moved. Second. On the board. Uh, Madam Clerk. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Clerk's office thanks you very much for doing this in a timely fashion so we can get our permits out quickly. And uh, we've, we've spoken a number of times about the uh, fees and how we change them each year. And, and um, we do them somewhat in, in uh, conjunction usually with our schedule that is part of our budget but because these need to be um, in place in order for the clerk's office to be able to have them in their in their permits accurately they were moving it ahead a little quicker than the rest of the budget and uh, we've been trying to catch up on some of the fees that have languished for a number of years and um, just get them up to something that's still very competitive with other communities but is uh, more reflective of um, well, it's interesting doing the research with other communities there's one, and Stewart's heard this story a couple of times. There was one community that we called about cabaret. Oh, we don't have cabaret. We have dance hall. Ooh. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> All right. Okay. So you do get a chocolate every now <laughs> Whereas the Board of Trustees of the Village of Austin has been considering the adoption of proposed local law number seven, 2017, titled Local Law Amending Chapter 24, Landlord Tenant Council, Relations Council of the Village of Austin Code, and was in accordance with New York State law and the Village of Austin Code, and having provided all requisite notice, the Board of Trustees conducted a public hearing on October the 18th, 2017, at 7:30 p.m. at the Birdsall Fagan Court Facility, 8688 Spring Street, Austin, New York, during which time. The public had an opportunity to be heard regarding the proposed local law, and whereas at the conclusion of the public hearing, the public hearing was closed, and whereas the proposed local law has been considered by the Board of Trustees, it has been determined that there is no impediments to the proceedings with the adoption of the local law. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Austin hereby adopts proposed local law number 7, 2017, as local law number 7, 2017 and directs that the said local law be filed and are distributed in accordance with applicable law. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. On the board. Um, I'll just take this as a time to tell uh, the public that we are still looking for volunteers for the board. Uh, we have uh, landlord representatives and representatives and uh, also for those who are not in its nor landlords, there's a portion for you as well. So um, this is a great committee uh, in uh, Trustee Levin have worked very hard in our five recommendations, and uh, this is just one, one, one more section, one more portion that's being pushed forward today, and we look forward to seeing the rest of it uh, come to fruition. 
Okay. okay, this is a roll call vote. Oh, I, I think that there are no. there any further comments? Yeah, no, no, I'm I was, sorry. Yeah, I, was, I, no, I was just going to ask uh, Stuart, just to refresh our memories. Seven. Sure. Uh, what this does is uh, it amends Chapter 24, which is deals with the Landlord Tenant Council. It increases membership to nine. Uh, the uh, members may be appointed for no more than four consecutive terms. Uh, the, uh, there, there are three different groups of members, three landlord members, three tenant members, and three uh, non-landlord tenant members. And as explained, examples of these three members would be owners of single family homes, owners of cooperative units, owners of condominium units, and owners of non-real estate related businesses who reside uh, in the village of Ossining. Uh, in addition to the nine members, the village's building inspector and the director of Section 8 Housing will serve as non-voting ex officio members, and the village's corporation council will provide legal counsel as necessary. Uh, the ordinance has uh, attendance requirements. It also provides that uh, the landlord tenant council can hold hearings and if uh, and request documents, if the documents are not provided, uh, a request can be made to the Corporation Council to issue a subpoena for the production of particular records uh, so that they can carry out uh, their function. And I just want to say thank you once again to the subcommittee um, who worked on the Landlord Tenant Relations Council. And I know there was a uh, Trustee Basemore and Trustee Levin worked with Corporation Council for many months to look at a variety of approaches for how to make this council um, a stronger, uh, uh, both a resource and um, whether it's a resource for landlords or for tenants, um, it's uh, you have some pretty lofty goals, and uh, this is this law is addressing the first two of five recommendations that you brought to us, and uh, I'm really pleased to uh, to be able to move these forward and look forward to uh, bringing up the others in in uh, short order. Um, and uh, this board has been diligent and uh, very focused on having a comprehensive approach to uh, addressing our housing challenges. And this is one step toward um, improving the safety and the quality of the housing in Austin. So thank you so much for bringing this forward. And I look forward to being able to support this tonight. Madam Clerk. Okay, the roll call vote. Trustee Bazemore. Aye. Trustee Codman. Aye. Trustee Cazada. Aye. Trustee Levin. Aye. And Mayor Garrity. Aye. Resolve the Board of Trustees hereby calls for a public hearing to take place at the Birdsall Fagan Police Court Facility, 8688 Spring Street, Austin, New York, on December 6, 2017, at 7.30 p.m. or as soon thereafter as the matter may be heard, to consider Local Law Number 8, titled A Local Law Amending Chapter 178 Noise of the Village of Austin Code. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Um, on the board, I think uh, in this case, uh, we're did you, did you mention in the beginning what are the modifications that we're making to the noise ordinance? Because we discussed a broader potential uh, a number of items we're going to include, but we kind of narrowed it down. I'll be happy to, Mayor. The, uh, the uh, ordinance uh, that is will be presented and for public hearing uh, and uh, local law eight, uh, proposed local law 8 2017 is also online. If you go to the uh, village's website and go to Corporation Council, it has uh, different local laws. Uh, thank goodness there's no picture of the Corporation Council, uh, but it does have the local laws. And, oh, yeah. uh, but, the, you know, <laughs> can see that. but what we've done is specifically we've added certain <laughs> we've added certain sections that relate to uh, uh, generators, uh, which would be used uh, by facilities of, uh, in the event that there are blackouts uh, or other uh, other reasons uh, to allow these generators to operate. Uh, to, uh, to, test, uh, to test the generators, uh, and we change certain decibel limitations with regard to that. So these are specifically designed as relating to, uh, uh, to generators. Uh, uh, there was a request made uh, for a particular location, uh, and uh, in reviewing that, we noted that there was nothing in the noise ordinance dealing with generators. So that is now in there, uh, or is, will be in there, uh, and the folks can review that, and they're certainly welcome to come to the public hearing on December the 6th. Thank you, and, and the board um, is always uh, interested in being responsive when something's brought to our attention. Um, and this is this is another incident where something came to our attention that hadn't been a concern before, and, and so it was, it was time for us to update our code. And we realized there were a couple of uh, gaps in our code related specifically to generators during emergency situations and such. And um, uh, Stuart, I just want to thank you for the uh, 
numerous uh, exchanges that you had with generator companies, and, and you've learned an awful lot about generator, generator testing, decibel levels, and, and all of that to make sure that we have uh, what we need here in this code, um, in this code revision. And I'll just uh, acknowledge uh, an element of our conversation because we've discussed this at the last two work sessions, and one of the topics that is not being addressed with this. Um, what we're calling for the public hearing right now, but we uh, all agreed we would bring back to the table for discussion is um, uh, electric powered leaf blowers. And if we wanted to curtail their use or even ban their use in the village, there have been a, a number of considerations and concerns brought forward. And it's, it's, a, it's, as we learned, not an easy topic to get uh, unanimity on or even consensus or even a majority of any sort. So uh, we're going to bring that back to the table and, and further explore that. And, and that, at that point, we may or may not have some um, further amendments to the noise ordinance. Adam Clark. All those in favor? I, oh, I, no, I wanted to add want something. To Am I allowed to mention who um, brought this to our attention? Uh, it I doesn't matter. It was brought, you know, I, I think sort of the nice thing is that this isn't just um, about noise, but actually was brought to us by a contractor that was doing work with a significant complex. And it was, it's, it should be noted that they right. called, you know, the management office, they asked, they told, guys exactly on us what they were doing and wanted to make sure that whatever they were doing in regards to their own complex and that of the neighbors was okay and that actually is what started the ball rolling so we always appreciate when people do that and encourage that actually so I wanted to thank them right. I don't know if I'm allowed to name the complex so I'm not going to <laughs> madam clerk all those in favor <laughs> all right. oh this is a roll call vote isn't it oh no this is no, just no, a public no. hearing I'm jumping the gun all right thank you we're going to be very busy on the 6th of December. <laughs> the, the 15th of November, too, is a relative. Really Resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby calls for a public hearing to take place at the Burns Hall Fagan Police Court Facility, 8688 Spring Street, Arts in New York, on December 6, 2017, at 7.30 p.m., or as soon thereafter as the matter may be heard, to consider Local Law Number 9, 2017, titled A Local Law Adding Chapter 6, <coughs> Boards and Commissions, to the Village of Austin Code and Amending Chapter 8, Civilian Police Complaint Review Board, Chapter 17, Code of Ethics, Chapter 119, Environmental Advisory Council, Chapter 162, Housing, Property, Maintenance, and Building Code Administration, Chapter 270, Zoning of the Village of Austin Code. That's it. Do I have a motion? So moved. moved. Second. <laughs> uh, uh, all those uh, on the board. Sorry, I'm distracted by reading on the head. Uh, on, the, on the board, Madam Clerk. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Whereas one Liberty Street in the Village of Ossing is owned by the Village of Ossing, which property measures approximately 0.25 acres, and whereas three Liberty Street in the Village of Ossing, located adjacent to one Liberty Street, is owned by Sparta Overlook LLC, and whereas Jeremy Wood is a member of the Sparta Overlook LLC, and whereas Jeremy Wood, without permission from the village, entered the property at 1 Liberty Street and removed trees, vines, undergrowth from 1 Liberty Street, essentially clear-cutting and leveling the property, and whereas Jeremy Wood acknowledged that the entry onto the village's property by Mr. Wood and or his agents was without permission, and whereas the actions of Jeremy Wood and or his agents constitutes trespass for which the village can seek to recover damages, including damages pursuant to real property actions and proceedings law section 861, and whereas pursuant to the village charter section C310, it shall be the duty of the corporation council or his or her designee to prosecute and defend all suits, actions, or legal proceedings of any kind brought by or against the village. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Austin authorizes the Corporation Council or his designee to undertake such litigation as necessary to prosecute an action for trespass, damages, and other such act, uh, causes of action as deemed appropriate by the Corporation Council resulting in the improper and unauthorized entry onto the village-owned property at 1 Liberty Street. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. On the board, <laughs> I know we have comments, uh, so it's just a matter of who's going to go I, first I, with their comments and questions. Yes, I'll go first. Please, thank you. Um, so just like um, one of the laws that we just passed, it was brought up by someone in a community that was doing some work. Uh, this was noted 
we got several emails from neighborhood uh, people from the neighborhood that uh, actually realized what was going on for us. Um, uh, Corporation Council did uh, their homework. Uh, it's a little disturbing that find out that actually the person who just uh, was here early today in regards to made a comment in regards to this actually was aware that this is a private property owned by the village uh, and yet still went about it and did um, without any communication to us something like this um, you know this is more like to me a reaction to what's going on I, I take I'm taking my daughter there um, first saw the house I thought it was uh, a little bit different to see a property being built there um, but it was actually uh, protected MTA or village owned property so which is a nice addition um, right next to that property is actually a, 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 we have an historic district Potter uh, neighborhood as well so it's a little bit confusing what was going on in there we did have conversations with our um, steward in regards to this and how do we should how should we deal with this um, so I'm, I'm okay moving forward with this resolution appropriate um, I think is uh, someone is trying to trespass in someone else's property you know, gonna do something you know let us know what's going on and maybe we could, we could have worked something out that was the case but that was not the case um, so I'm happy to proceed with this in regards to and I can only speak for myself in regards to buying this property village as a whole process um, that's something else that not uh, as far as I know is not right now on the table um, is I have uh, from my part uh, but you know I don't know if the other board members will speak in so, uh, but I'm happy. I'm happy that Stuart is taking the lead on this. So thank you, Stuart. Um, anybody else want to comment further and share any of their other um, concerns that might have been raised in the discussion? Thank you. Um, I guess it's just hard for me to wrap my head around, um, you know, r regardless of who owned the property um, that you would go on to another piece of property and go ahead and do something, you know, because you thought it was a good thing to do. Um, you know, life is full of good intentions, but uh, uh, property is property law is the foundation uh, of our constitution. And uh, when you step over the boundary and you begin to alter that property, uh, that's a serious thing, and it's not to be taken lightly. Um, I think the resolution speaks for itself. Um, I'm disappointed that it's come to this, but uh, you know I, I will support the resolution, and uh, uh, we'll see where that leads us. Anybody else want to comment? I mean, for me, I would echo um, the feelings. It's in regards of whose property it is, people can't just go and be on their own property line, even with good intentions. And, um, you know, that property's on a cliff. It's a view of the Hudson. There are other people that live there. There are people, including myself and my children are younger, who use that little park and, and just can't own the properties in regards of your intentions. Um, so, you know, from my point of view, I'm supportive of um, thank you, uh, Stuart, for having someone go and um, the arborist go and check out. I, I was uh, I'm actually surprised that there were as many as two dozen trees that uh, moved from that property. Um, and uh, just from an environmental perspective, uh, you know, what one man thinks is a great idea and an improvement, somebody else might say is um, a concern for the stability of the property, and uh, which now has to be invested in to maintain the. Um, the uh, integrity of the property so that it doesn't get washed away and concerns like that. And um, I, I will acknowledge that I was not aware of the condition of the property or that the village owned it um, or that there were concerns about it. But those concerns wouldn't have been brought to me on a day to day basis. I don't know if they were brought to the village. Um, there were a number of complaints. If it, there had been private property that there were complaints about, an order to remedy might have been issued if nothing had been done about it. Um, so, uh, um, 
it's, it is unfortunate that this is the next step here, and I'm, I, I'm sure it's not the last we're going to hear about One Liberty Street. Madam Clerk. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Whereas 21 Edwards, Edward Street in the village of Osing is currently owned by Leroy Gooden and his wife, Marsha Mohammed, and where 21 Edward Street shares a common wall with 23 Edward Street, which property is owned by Adam West Waterbury, and where a fire at 21 Edward Street rendered that building uninhabitable, leaving the premises open to the elements and creating a hazard for the residents of 23 Edward Street, and whereas the owners of 21 Edward Street have not undertaken any repairs to the property since the fire and have allowed the premises to further deteriorate, and whereas personnel from the village's building department have visited the premises on multiple occasions observing the dilapidated and dangerous condition of the building, and whereas the village has retained outside contractors temporarily secure the premises, and whereas the building at 21 Edward Street was placarded by building department personnel directing that no one enter the premises, and whereas an order to remedy was issued by the village code enforcement officer directing that the 21 Edward Street be demolished, and whereas despite the issuance of the order to remedy, the owners of 21 Edward Street have not taken any action to demolish the building. And whereas pursuant to the village charter section C310, it shall be the duty of the corporation council or his or her designee to prosecute and defend all suits, actions, or legal proceedings of any kind brought by or against the village. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Ossing authorizes the Corporation Council or his designee to undertake such litigation as necessary for a declaration that the property of 21 Edward Street be abandoned pursuant to real property actions and proceedings, Law Article 19A, and for such other actions as the Corporation Council deems appropriate. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. On the board, again, I believe you probably have some comments here. Um, I just want to thank you, Stuart, because uh, you continue to find uh, new nuances in the New York State law that help us uh, address uh, serious issues. I've had uh, countless conversations, and I believe that maybe some of our board members, if not all, have had countless conversations with Mr. Waterbury. And we're glad that, definitely I'm glad that there's something that can be done to remedy this issue. So thank you for your, your hard work and dedication and your research. Mr. Quesada, did you want to comment on this? Yes. Um, so this is, uh, thank you, Stuart, again, for this. Um, and internally, we have a lot of conversations in regards to this particular property. Uh, this is definitely a way for us to help uh, to remedy the situation that has been going on for months. Um, so I, I guess as a general question is, what is exactly, how long would it take? And um, after this, uh, what is the next step that we have to take regards to uh, particular property, I guess. Because this is, this is just for the public, this is the first time I know of uh, that the village has gone through this whole process to take up property and on property. Can I elaborate a little bit in that, Stuart, please? Of course. Uh, there's a formal notice of abandonment uh, which gets filed uh, with Marianne. And we'll get also, and also will be filed with the court. Uh, at that point, the village uh, can uh, commence a lawsuit in Westchester Supreme Court in White Plains uh, to have a declaration of abandonment for the building. Uh, ordinarily, in these situations, there is a lengthy period of time to notify uh, mortgage uh, uh, mortgage companies. Uh, this case, that does not apply. There is no mortgage on this property. Uh, there are judgments against the property, and those judgment creditors will be notified. Uh, and uh, that's done because they may be interested in trying to fix the property themselves so that they can perhaps ultimately sell the property and recover on the judgment. I've notified the board before that there is one very large judgment against a prior owner of this property, which totals approximately $400,000, so uh, which makes a sale effectively, you know, impossible. Uh, but once uh, the the application is made to the court and uh, we prove proper notice, uh, the court would make a determination of abandonment. 
uh, and then the uh, and then the court essentially directs that a, a deed is issued transferring the title of the property to the village. Uh, there are other interim steps that I have discussed with the board uh, during advice of counsel, which can be done in addition to the abandonment. But the legal, the direct legal action that this would do is to uh, remove uh, Mr. Waterbury and Ms. Muhammad as owners of this particular property. Uh, they would have no further interest in the property. In fact, interest would be transferred to the village. Uh, and uh, there is, uh, uh, in view of the fact there's no mortgage, there's no one there who, let, let me just back up. If there was a mortgage, uh, the mortgage lender generally can ask for the action to be stayed for up to six months uh, while they make a determination as to both what they want to do and, in fact, are they going to uh, make the necessary repairs. That does not apply here because there's no one who can effectively ask for such a stay. So that uh, allows the village to act in a far more expeditious manner to get that property turned over. So it's more a matter of just getting the papers into Westchester Supreme Court, getting it assigned to a judge, uh, and then making the, the application at that point. I don't you think that made Just an estimate. I'd like to say that with everything, probably 45 to 60 days. And the reason I say that is that under court rules, judges are supposed to make decisions within 45 to 60 days. So hopefully this is something that can be expedited. Uh, but I think we, we need to at least understand that that's probably what we're looking at in terms of a, a time frame to get it turned over. As I mentioned, as the board is aware, there are other interim actions that can be taken in addition, but the actual abandonment, you're probably looking at 45 to 60 days from the actual filing with the court. Sure. Trustees Codman, 11, did you have any comments or questions on this? No. Um, well, I just, uh, for the public who's Coming into this, we haven't had any public discussions about this particular property, though, as has been acknowledged, we have discussed it with council a number of times. It's a really sad situation for everyone who is involved. And many of the folks in the community, especially parents in the district, you'll remember when that fire happened across the street from Park School just a few years ago. It was really, really very sad. And uh, the, the community responded in a compassionate way because we went off singing. And um, I, I know. It, the whole sequence of events just gets more and more sad with each step um, to what we heard tonight from Mr. Waterbury, who's the neighbor, and it is unusual. We don't have very many semi-attached properties in Austin, but this is one instance where we do, where they actually share a wall, which makes it so much more complicated for the neighbors. Um, so uh, the village is certainly not interested in um, becoming real estate property owners anymore. Than, um, that's just not the business we're in. Um, and we did have many theoretical discussions uh, that when Stewart brought it to atten uh, our attention a few months ago about what it would mean to declare a, a property uh, vacant and abandoned. Um, and now we're actually um, seeing this happen in a kind of surprising way for the first time. So I'll be interested to see how it unfolds. And, and I thank you for walking us through this in such a careful manner and helping us understand what this really means um, in an effort to address what is a, a, just a really painful, tough situation for everyone involved. So thank you. Madam Clerk. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolved the Board of Trustees of the Village of Austin hereby calls for a public hearing in the matter of the local of the of the 2018 uh, tentative budget to be held on November 15, 2017 at the Birdsall Fagan Police Court facility. 8688 Spring Street at 7.30 p.m. or as soon thereafter as the matter can be heard. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. On the board. Well, I'll just take a moment to say, welcome aboard, Debbie. This is your first budget that you've gotten to lead, and I know you've had a lot of really in-depth, um, I hope fascinating. It sounds like you've had some really interesting and enlightening meetings with department heads bringing you to this point, and we are so excited. It, it was delivered to us live on camera tonight, so we've really not gotten a chance to see it. So I, I'm very excited to learn more about it and to really delve into it. Thanks so much. Looking forward to it. Madam Clerk. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolved the village managers authorized to execute an agreement with H2M Architects plus Engineers, 2700 Westchester Avenue, Suite 415, Purchase, New York, for an amount not to exceed $370,000 not including reimbursable expenses for professional, architectural, and engineering services involving design development, 
preparation of construction documents, bidding and solicitation phase services, and construction phase services for the proposed renovation to the John Paul Rodriguez Hosting Operations Center subject to review and approval of said agreement by Corporation Council. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. On the board? I will just uh, call to folks attention if you're interested in learning more about um, what we're talking about here with the uh, potential re uh, the land renovations for the uh, operation center up on 9A. That is the first item that was on our agenda and this one I'm quite confident in last week on the 25th of October and that uh, video is available on YouTube and uh, you can learn all about it there. We had the um, village engineer as well as the design engineer there telling us about that project. So we're excited about that. Madam Clerk. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Whereas by resolution adopted by the Board of Trustees on November 1st, 2017, the Board of Trustees authorized the village manager to sign an agreement with H2M Architects and Engineers for professional architectural and engineering services for proposed renovation to the John Paul Rodriguez Austin Operations Center at an estimated cost of $393,000, including estimated reimbursable expenses. And was the village treasurer recommended the use of accumulated and available surplus fund balance in the general water and sewer funds to be set aside in a capital project to pay for such proposed architectural and engineering services. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the adopted budgets of the general water and sewer funds in 2017 are modified to appropriate. Uh, accumulated and available surplus fund balance for the estimated cost of such architectural and engineering services for the proposed renovations and that a capital project be established to the account for the estimated revenues and expenditures for the professional architectural and engineering services proposed renovations to the John Paul Rodriguez Housing Operations Center at an estimated cost of $393,000. Have your whole thing here. <laughs> I will not go into uh, project number 2190, project name, uh, renovation to John Paul Rodriguez Austin Operations Center, the original project budget, $393,000. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Uh, second. Yes, did you want to ask a question, John? Uh, yeah, the... Um... The two different numbers? <laughs> yes, please help me understand. <laughs> if I, Thank if you. I may, and I, I, I realize that in our village manager called it to my attention as well. In resolution P, which you just approved, that was not to exceed three hundred seventy thousand, not including reimbursable expenses. Okay. On their contract documents, the reimbursable expenses would not be more than twenty three thousand dollars. So you take the twenty three thousand plus the three seventy, you get the three ninety three that appears in resolution Q, because resolution Q is the estimated cost including the reimbursable expenses. So that's why. Uh, okay. Um, no, I, I, now I recall from the uh, the work session right. so last that, week, it was kind of a footnote on the proposal. So, correct. Okay, I'm uh, satisfied. Thank you. Madam Clerk. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That completes your resolution for this evening. Do you have any more continuing business of the board? Uh, no, I think we're fine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any new business of the board? I, I will just take a moment to uh, make a couple of uh, calendar updates. Um, November, as, as everybody has seen, is exciting budget month for us here in the village, which means lots of budget meetings. We get to meet with all of our department heads and, and Debbie and, and Tom and Dale and the whole board. We're really excited. Um, but what that means is we're juggling things around. And, and Amy Marianne's office is fully updated, right? Okay, so this is just... For anybody who's watching this meeting, if you've made it this deep into the meeting, you should really know because uh, you're somebody who's really paying attention. Um, but uh, next week, where we would normally be having our work session, um, it's going to be a budget meeting. Uh, so it will not be our regular work session agenda. It's, it's handled a little differently. And then we'll be back in this room on the 15th, and we'll begin with uh, public hearings. One of them we called for tonight, which is on the budget. The budget is or will soon be available online for the public to review so that they have a couple of weeks to come back to us with questions. And if they want to ask us questions um, at the uh, November 15th meeting, they can. Um, the other public hearing that we're having is related to uh, 
That's the lead agency for the secret process. No, no, no? that's the zoning text oh. amendment for uh, for one for, for the T zones with regard. Oh, thank to you, thank you. Yes, yeah, <laughs> Okay, um, for the T zones for uh, yeah, which was brought to us by another property owner on um, North Highland, but it um, could potentially impact the uh, zoning for T zones. And there's four different T zones in the neighborhood, and and um, there's been an, an an effort to notify everyone who lives in the T zone that, that they would like to join us on the 15th. They are welcome here as well. So we'll open with that, then we'll go into another one of these lovely legislative sessions, um, and then the following Wednesday is Thanksgiving Eve, the 22nd. Everybody's going to be home defrosting their turkeys and setting their tables, though we get the night off. However, we're so lucky that November has five Wednesdays. So our fifth Wednesday, we're going to be back at Village Hall for a work session. And that's actually our only regular work session for the month of November. So that'll be a regular work session. So we're here now. Next week's a budget meeting, so not a regular work session. The 15th, we'll be back here for the public hearing and regular legislative session. Thanksgiving week, everybody enjoy your evening off because you're going to be back on week five. Uh, November 29th will be at Village Hall for a work session. Um, and I also um, just want to let folks know something I neglected to mention regarding um, uh, what I learned today at uh, the ribbon cutting for the reservoir. Um, the folks at Arcadis, who are the uh, engineer um, designers for the dam project, uh, this Friday they are going to be presenting our dam as a case study at the um, Waterworks conference. And that, that conference is largely organized by our very own Steve Ho, who is our chief filter plant operator. And that was his suggestion that, um, that our dam project would be a, a good presentation for other communities to learn from. So we're really pleased to be highlighted so positively in that way. Um, and if anybody, uh, Steve said, if, if you'd like to attend, I can share the information with you. It's a uh, morning uh, this Friday. Uh, just say, I'm with Steve Ho. Uh, you can come in and then hear the presentation. With that, Madam Clerk. I'm okay, take Madam, one more. I'm please. just going to take for those that are listening. Um, I'm just going to. I always want to put a plug in for these guys. You know, I took a tour of the plant. I asked a lot of questions about water. I took my daughter. I have to tell you, she was thoroughly excited by it. I had a friend who was with the California Water Company flew in for a visit. He called up, got a tour of the place. It's a phenomenal plant. It's the stuff that they're working on is, if you ever want a tour, you need to just call um, either Paul or Steve. I'm just putting a plug in for them, looking right at the village manager, because it's a real opportunity that other towns and villages don't get to have, so. Yes, we have a remarkable team and a really fantastic water system. Any others? Good. Madam okay. Clark. Madam Mayor, just for the public's um, education, the all of the meetings are on the on the low HUD calendar. Thank so you. So if they can, that went on last week. Okay, good, good. That's fine. And that'll move us into visitor recognition. Is there anyone who's come to address the board? Good evening. Welcome. So would, would you uh, would you I'm acknowledge? Gonna talk, I'm going to talk about my favorite subject. Route 9. <clears throat> the redesign of Route 9 continues to come up every time the future of the village is to seriously discussed. The most recent committee again brought it up, and it is part of the revised master plan of 2009. This evening I want to discuss property taxes and sales tax income as they relate to the 1.3 mile stretch of Route 9 in the village. Residential property taxes are notoriously high in Ossining, but should be no surprise since our most valuable commercial property, Route 9, is either underdeveloped or underperforming. There is no parking, so a retail business has a rough time making a go of it. Potential customers are unaware of any existing businesses because a four-lane highway suggests there's nothing to stop for. <clears throat> Meanwhile, income to run the village has to come from somewhere. If the commercial tax base is too low for a village of this size, the residential property taxes will, of necessity, be higher. It is not news that the village needs more parking, but consider what a redesign of the roadway would do to the parking stock in the village. Upwards of 100 curbside parking spaces would magically appear. 
making it look just like the good old days. This will automatically increase the value of this property, making it more appealing to development and thus the potential for an increase in sales tax revenue. As our late mayor, Tom Camberry, once said when writing to the DOT, we have a pig in a python situation here, wherein cars jam into available space on the widened highway and then have to squeeze back down to two lanes in only a few blocks. We all know Ossining is beginning to flourish, and isn't it fun? It really is. However, we need to fix our gateway. It's really time, folks. It's time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I'll just update. Uh, I'll let um, <clears throat> Debbie, I don't know if you've had a chance to meet with um, Miss Maureen Morgan. That's who spoke. She didn't um, tell us her name. Um, but uh, uh, Miss Morgan has been diligently for many years um, focusing attention on Route 9. She's a wonderful resource for our community, and her um, thoughtful comments tonight are a little bit of a different angle than she may have presented in public meetings before, but she has um, been a longtime advocate for redesigning Route 9. Um, if, if you wanted to comment on um, any conversations you've been having, um, please feel free. It's up to you regarding Route 9. Or if, that, if you want to hold off until uh, you're further along in the process of figuring out, that's fine too. Yeah, um, I, I would like um, you and I spoke at the coffee shop uh, when I first came, which was really nice. And uh, I appreciated the conversation that we had, and you had brought up Route 9 with me at that time. And um, I just want to let uh, folks know that there is discussion uh, with our uh, representatives here, um, and we have decided that it would be good to put together a request of the DOT. Um, so that we know what we're asking for when we go to visit them and at what we want to do as far as calming the road down or adding parking or whatever it is. But I think that uh, it would be good for our community to come up with a strategy that we all uh, agree to and then go to the state DOT and ask them to help us make those modifications. So uh, we do have some state support for that at this time. So I'm excited about that. So thank you for coming. It's good to see you again. Good morning. Is there anyone else who'd like to address the board? I am a newcomer in Austining. I'm from Peekskill. Welcome. Um, so kind as to name. Yes, my name is Anicia Luca. <laughs> nice to meet you, everyone in the board. Um, I just, something just dawned on me. I love the history of Austin because I've been studying it for some time now. And I'm still a newcomer here. And I was wondering, maybe we can incorporate, probably in the future, if it's possible, trolleys, like back in the day, for, for the people in the village to get around. Like for me, I depend on the public limousine and stuff like that. And uh, in, in the... In the village, it would be nice if we had like little trolleys like back in the day before our time. I, I don't know. I just, it just I, dawned I, on me. <laughs> well, uh, apparently it's an idea whose time has come because that is a comment that um, and, and an effort that has been um, uh, brought forth in a variety of ways. Um, which is how do we deal with our transportation needs that we have today because we did at one time have a trolley and then we became very car focused and our development became very car centric and now we have people for many many reasons who don't want to have to drive a car every time they go someplace in our community Whether yes because you, you a car requires gasoline yes it requires so much and especially like people like me that can't afford one you know and and then you have to do the hood walk, like I tell Mr. Quintel. Everywhere I go, I have to do the hood walk, like I call it. So it's... <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. I will tell you that um, the village has been partnering with the town on some pretty um, aggressive grant applications to be able to um, put together a hyper-local transit or an urban circulator, which is essentially the trolley of today. Um, our first um, application uh, 
has been acknowledged by New York State as a priority project. We'll see if that means they give us any money or if they just say, hey, good idea. I'm going to pray on him. I'm a <laughs> prayer warrier. Okay. Ms. Well, Mayor, or maybe I'm a that'll prayer be the, warrior. That'll be just what we need. Something's <laughs> got to give because I am so tired of doing the hood walk, Miss Mayor. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much for your comment. And, and, okay. and actually, that's not even the only um, that's not even the only grant application. We did another grant application to um, Bloomberg Philanthropies, which is um, an even larger pot of money that could come to us to do a major planning and uh, then implementation theoretically. So it's something that I, I think there's a lot of support for it for for a variety of reasons. So thank you very much for sharing your story. And actually, after we uh, finish up this meeting in a moment, I'd love to just connect with you. So maybe we can reach out to you as a resource. Awesome. That sounds like a plan. Thank All you, right. Ms. Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Do you have anyone else? All right. It's a busy night in visitor recognition. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Frank Sylvester, 5 Butler Place. Uh, as a longtime volunteer firefighter in the community, I'd like to make a public service announcement. Uh, remind everybody that Saturday night we're changing our clocks and we're falling back. Thank you. Not to forget to change the batteries in your smoke alarms and your carbon monoxide detectors. Um, folks that are around town a lot, you can hear the fire whistle going left and right because we're chasing smoke alarms, carbon monoxide alarms, and these are there for public safety. We're not complaining about going, but if the battery is not working, you could go to bed one night and unfortunately not wake up because your heating device or something else in the house could put off carbon monoxide and it is fatal. So a public service announcement. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Mr. Sylvester. All right, I then have a motion to adjourn to executive session for personnel. So and, moved. And for matters relating to litigation. Second. Uh, all those in favor. Aye. Aye. And with that, I say thank you very much.